Right. Hey everyone, Kevin Boy Smuggler here, and uh, today we're going to talk about Star Wars. Where is it going? What direction are we in? Uh, what are the toys doing? What are the toys not doing? So I've got a got some thoughts and theories on everything, and uh, definitely going to be uh, trying to answer some questions if anybody's got their thoughts and opinions on everything. Because uh, the reason I'm, uh, you know, to me, I, I, I collect a lot of different toys. You know, I, I love my He-Man, uh, Mego stuff, Flash Gordon. You know, of course, vintage Star Wars is where it all started back in the day and stuff like that. And, and, the, and the reason, the concern that I'm having is popping up. The one thing that I've noticed in the last few years, you know, with the movies out, there was always this hype going on, you know. We had the solo movies, you know, even though there was a lot of negativity going on, obviously, but still, it was in front of everyone's faces. Well, now all of a sudden, not so much. And, you know, the only thing we got uh, kind of still hanging on, you got some Mandalorian stuff. You know, it's getting ready to trickle back in, hopefully, here soon. And the COVID-19 has definitely slowed it down, which has slowed everything down. And this year, I mean, I was rolling really hard. And man, but like everybody else in the toy and the convention scene, this has just really rocked everybody's boat. And, uh, you know, I guess I'm just no different than anybody else. Took a pretty good sizable hit. And what do we do? We're just going to just keep marching on, just wait it out. Really, that's the only thing that we can do is just to wait it out. And But my biggest concern here with the whole... Uh, Toy collecting, it, just like anything else, I, I, I study what we're what we're doing now. What's the next toy line that's going to be the hot collectible? And one thing that people tend to forget is what used to be hot in toy collecting. And a lot of the old, like Buck Rogers, I'm talking about old Buck Rogers, old Flash Gordon, and st stuff like from the 60s, even the old uh, 12 inch GI Joe. Some of that stuff especially in the in the 60s stuff, is really starting to, it's not that it's any, worth any less than what it used to be. It is just that it is just not desirable anymore because of the people are dropping off. And just like uh, me, I'm, I'm knocking on 50 years old, just like most other vintage Star Wars fans, sooner or later down the line, we're going to quit buying this stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, I got all of them. So, I mean, I'm missing a, a couple of ships and I'm, I think I'm missing a place or two, but sooner or later, I mean, uh, and, and I know you what you, everybody's kind of thinking is, you know, well, they're constantly remaking things. You know, here we are. We got the black series. We got the, uh, the new, uh, Luke Skywalker, the Snow Speeder, Hoth Rebel deal. I got both of those. Very nice figure. Now, I really like what they've done. I won't get into more detail. I got, got a little nitpick on this one, but overall, very nice figure. But the point I'm getting at, since, you know, this original R2-D2 has been made, there has been probably 50 more R2s been made. Newer versions, and they and then they know they got they don't come out in the black series. How many R2s are they gonna keep making and we're gonna quick keep and we're gonna keep buying? I mean, really, people. I mean, how many ways can you change up R2 to still make him worth buying? How many I mean, because you take this Luke right here, he's I mean, with the digital uh photo face reel and stuff like that. There's not a whole lot left that you can do with this figure. And if you make it again, it's just going to be in another package. And it's just, it's not a new figure. It's just a, a variant of the same figure. So how much more of this are we going to do? I, I, I have a unsettling feeling. We're, we are definitely toward the end of, uh, especially the vintage Star Wars stuff. And, uh, and another reason I'm kind of, debating on this and talking about it is i had a got to hang out with my grandson last weekend i got to hang out with him again last night and that's what really it made me think of it all this week and then he came back over up here 
got to hang out in the toy room. He had a blast. But one of the weirdest things was, I mean, he's sitting here. He's he loves Star Wars. He anything in Star Wars, he loves. But at the same time, he really didn't give a flying flip about the vintage toys. It was all about the new stuff, the Ray, the new Stormtroopers. Kylo Ren, you know, he didn't, you know, he loves the basic stormtroopers and stuff like that. And some characters like this right that he seemed like from the video games. But overall, if it wasn't a main character in one of the new movies, he, he just really wasn't that interested. And he really didn't care about, you know, the, he's not big on the five point. He's, he's really big on the Lego stuff, which I'm, I'm just not a Lego fan. But still, the bottom line is, if it wasn't the newer Star Wars stuff, he just wasn't involved with it. So he just really don't care. So this new generation doesn't care about, don't care a whole lot about the old characters. They're, they like the characters that they were introduced to, just like us. We were introduced to Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, et cetera, et cetera. So therefore, just like anything else, uh, there's a shelf limit there's a time limit on everything and i do believe that uh considering how disney has handled the product and really took anything that was a part of the vintage can and just really trashed it pretty much i mean it's dove it made it take a face dive right in the mud so to speak and uh and i, I really hate that because it was you know they was given you know they paid a whole lot of money we're talking about billions of dollars just to take such an iconic product and just to murder it. And I just, and, and, I, and I wish I could say anything nicer, but I really can't. I mean, did I, did I like the solo movie? Yes. Did I like Rogue One? Yes. The other three movies? Not so much. Did I, did I see that they had a lot of potential? Yes. They had, I thought, first one I had, it, the, the Ray character. I thought she'd done great. I thought the character was a good idea, but they just didn't do anything with it. They went to the left and then went to the left again. They kept going to the left. And then some of the other characters, uh, Poe and, and everybody, else, they had some good core actors that you just really liked. And But they then, by the second movie, they just took everybody and just, Ryan Johnson, uh, man, can you kill a story? Man, can you kill characters? I have never seen anybody take something, just hand it to you on a silver platter, and just flush it down the toilet the way you did with that with that, that movie. And I know a lot of people think, oh, it was a great movie, the special effects, and yada, yada. Listen, it didn't feel like Star Wars. It, it just didn't. In the last movie, J.J. Uh, Abrams really done his best to really – go back and try to undo a lot of the issues. And it, did he do a pretty good job? I think he done the best considering the situation. And, and and that's where I'm at with it. And then, But the sad thing is, here we are left, toy collectors. And that's what this whole episode is about, is about the toys here. Not really much as the movies, but it is all tied in together. Is where do we go from here? What are we going to do? I mean, I'm sitting here with my collection. Like I said, I got, I'm, I'm even low ball. I got 90% of what I want. There's 10% maybe out there that I do want. Not like I can't get it within the next year if I really wanted to. You know, I'm, I'm just not in no rush. I'm, I just sit back and I like finding the hunt and finding things in different places. You know, I'm not in no big hurry for what few things I'm missing. So in the next generation, the new generation of kids doesn't care about these at all. In the Black Series, I mean, like I said, how many Luke's and X-Queens are we going to need? I mean, we got the New Hope. we got this version. If they do make another version of this, why buy it? I'm not buying these to resell. I'm not buying these to make a financial profit or anything like that. I mean, and it's a very, very nice figure. I mean, I mean, you can go on the internet, but I'll, it's very, and I like this card, even though I don't like that. The one thing I do like about the boxes that you can take them out and look at them and put them back in. I do like that. But at the same time, if you're going to hang them up, this will look really nice on your wall. 
The only nitpick that I have to say with this figure is the compared to the last X-Wing fighter loot that came out is the last one came with the pistol, but you never seen him. I don't think in the in the new hope use the pistol, but in this movie, he actually uses the pistol. Then he don't even come with it, even though he's wearing the belt. You can see there, there's the belt that should have the pistol with the pistol holster. They just cheapoed out and didn't put it on it. So, and if I had to guess, knowing Hasbro, they did that just so a year from now, they can come back out again, probably take the helmet off, put the helmet to the side so you can see the face better. And then that time it'll probably have the gun and the holster just so they can say, Oh, it's oh we fixed the mistake and the fans decided to do this. So that's if I had to guess, it's it that was left out and the helmet was put on. All that was a ploy. So a year from now, they can come out with a, a variant two of this just for that reason. So and I I'm, I'm not going to care. I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> just just not it, unless I find it dirt cheap. And I'll look at one of them and say, which one would I rather hang it up and which one would I rather rip open? I might do that. Maybe. I don't know. Doubt it. And then they have the Hoth Rebel Soldier. Very well done. Got the cool feature that the different faces in the backpack and stuff. Uh, a funky little cheat on the image, though. If you look at the figure versus the details on the image, it was a mirror image done because they want it. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming aesthetically he looked better facing the other way. On the card versus facing the other way. So that's just the artist nitpicking on that. It's little things like that does stick out when you're when you do digital artwork, doing toy packaging and stuff like that. It's a it's nothing wrong, and I, I get why they did it. Is they they could have went to the, I'm sure somewhere there was a stock photo somewhere that could have had the same guy facing the other way. So they they may maybe they been was limited on their images. I don't know. So, so there we go. That leaves us here with only a, a glimmer of hope, which is the Mandalorian TV series. And the, the problem I'm having with it, and it's not the problem with the show. It's the problem is, for us vintage guys, this is probably the best storyline and the best vintage feel thing that's going. And, you know, I'm, and I'm glad it's a TV series versus a movie. I, I think that's actually helping the product. And I understand our current situation has slowed it down getting the Disney Plus right now, which is which is fine. No big deal. I understand it. But the problem I'm having is, is the lack of seeing it in the stores. I had to hunt last year like a mat, or was it earlier this year? Either way, I had to hunt like a dog to find this thing. We're talking like uh, I went to six different Disney stores, uh, Walmarts, and I finally found it at a bookstore, a books a million. I finally, and I ended up paying, I had to pay, a, and I went to uh, so many games, uh, yeah, it was like six game stops, three Disney stores. I mean, it was just ridiculous. I think it was like the ninth store before I finally found this thing over a course of a month, really hunting this thing down. And, and boom, and since I found it that one time, I have yet to see it out in the wild ever, ever since. It's nowhere. Everybody done bought them up. And even with the uh, the three and three quarter inch figures, I got both of them uh, the, in the Caradoon and everything. Same thing with those. You've see, seen them the one time, poof, gone. Not been back at Walmart since. So, so how, uh, so here are the things that we do want. That are that are out. I don't even know if they're, whether they're even working on anything new right now. You know, and but it's not in. You can't even find it at the stores anyway. So what does it matter? If they got something new. It's not even at the store. So so here we are. You know, these guys. You know, and these aren't mine. These are actually. I'm actually getting ready to show you these some vintage goodness here. Uh, Two little guys I'm getting ready to rescue and clean up for battlegrounds. Michael and Jason over there getting ready to clean these little guys up. Their store is doing really good right now. They've really bounced back. And a, just an awesome store ran by great people, which I knew it would. You get everybody uh, all 
cooped up, you know, going to get out and spend some money. And then what a better place to do it than Battlegrounds. I mean, just it's an amazing place to go shopping and just, and just hang out and meet great people. It's almost like going to a little mini convention every time you go there and stuff and everything. But, but getting back to these figures is, you know, I may buy a, buy a few more of these little guys just to, I like saving them. <laughs> I hate seeing them in this kind of condition and getting thrown away and stuff like that. And, uh, but at the same time, I mean, you know, and plus we had the retro figures. You see them back here hanging on my wall, which was great. I think that was neat. They're hanging and I'm sure they're going to do a return of the Jedi. Just common sense thinking they're going to do it. But after that, I mean, you know, we see the vintage collection coming out. I mean, and it's the sad thing is most of these vintage collection figures, especially the three and three quarter, is the same figures that came out five or six years ago. Ah, El Rodimus. Hey, happy Friday to you, brother. And everything just talking a little Star Wars here and uh, kind of talking about the dilemma that we're in on uh, the lack of toys and the, the lack of toy options. And at the same time, I, I think we're all uh, unfortunately headed toward a direct. I think we done started in this direction, and to where as far as collecting Star Wars figures is, I think we're on the downward slope to finally coming to its end. As far as us guys, the vintage guys. Now the newer people, if you're a newer Star Wars fan, and that's where you came in at. You know, I'm sure Disney's going to pump out some kind of crap later on. They're, they're good at pumping out the crap. And so, but I'm talking about vintage Star Wars here and the, and the vintage characters and stuff to where, you know, you know, like I, the one thing I was talking about, El Rodimus, is like, you know, you got a Star Wars uh, X Wing Luke here. How many times are they going to repackage this or keep making the same figure? And I, I'm to the point, I'm tired of buying them. I, I really am. I mean, I got. I think this is my third or fourth X-Wing Luke. I got three or four Boba Fett's. I mean, and we're, we're and everybody has pushed so hard for this digital format that, you know, we're, we're darn near getting some pretty perfect figures. What do you do after you have the perfect figure? The only thing left is change the damn packaging. And I, I don't care about having the same figure in five different packages just so I can say I have every variant. I mean, I just don't, I just see that going to the wayside anymore. Jordell, hey, how you doing, brother? Glad you can join us this evening. And uh, thank you very much. Like I said, I'm glad, I apologize for being on a little hiatus lately. The life has been very interesting. The toy smuggler has been working like a dog lately. And I have been exhausted. Uh, I had a back injury. I'm just now finally recovering over the back injury. I was uh, pretty much down for two weeks, uh, actually a little over two weeks. So uh, kind of hard to want to get in front of the camera and put a smile on when you're <laughs> cussing under your breath because every time you wiggle, you're, the air, my back was hurting so bad, it was just taking air out of me every time I wiggled. So let's see. Yeah, constant reflex. Uh, constantly i mean yeah give it six months and they'll be coming back coming out in a repack and, and they're going and they're bouncing now from the carded version to the box version and 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 that's fine and i honestly i don't have a big issue with that that way if you want to keep this one because this one looks better as far as display i actually just finally uh right before i hurt my back is i had a shelf and it was just full of the black series boxes and what do you see Five figures because you couldn't see nothing behind it so all you seen after that was just black and red black and red i mean and so so it, you constantly every week you had to rearrange to see something new versus these guys right here when you hang them on the wall you, you get some color you get a little bit of eye candy you know you got the the different movie logos you can you know kind of stay kind of like you've done the rec that's the reason why i got the retro series not not because they're worth anything they're ten dollars pieces of crap but they look nice in that package, and I'll never pay a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for a real one. I'm not going to do it. That's stupid. So rather spend ten bucks, got the eye candy that I want. I'm happy. But with the in the ones in the box, you can't. They don't display well. But the great thing about the box, you can open them up. I'm a sculptor. I love touching the toys. I like. Damn, how does this thing work? How does it, you know? I like putting my hands on it. Like I said, I'm an artist. Got to have my hands on it. 
and you can put it back in the box. I love that. That's one thing. Uh, uh, classic TV toys. Even though it costs five bucks, but I love those dang clamshells where you can close your figure in it, and when you want it out, you pull it out, set it up. When you're done, you put it back up. It looks, man, when, time you do that one time, you may, you, you saved your money. You, you got your money's worth, I promise you. Chris Smith, how you doing, brother? Yeah, he hadn't talked. Yeah, man, it's, it's been crazy, man. Let's see, what else you got to hear today? Uh, See, so I'll be sending you some. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, and some from my daughter. Oh, she'll. Hey, she love. Hey, she loved the snack, the, the little snag and everything. Oh man, she she loves them, man. She loves the she loves the alien. She, my my little girl. I, I got her so much around vintage Star Wars and He Man stuff. She loves a good alien figure. So thank you very much, Chris. Greatly, greatly appreciate, man. I hope you're doing well and everything over there. I, like I said, I hadn't even been on Facebook much hardly at all. Like I said, uh, it's been a pretty rough month. I've had some. Uh, like I said, some back injuries, and I actually had the work's been killing me, and with a back injury, it's not even made it, made it that much better. Then on top of that, I had some big thing family-wise. I had two big, huge things family-wise. I ain't going to go into details on those two things, but one was pretty de hard to deal with, and we're still dealing with it, and another thing was a great, amazing thing. So it's just like both ends of the spectrum, and uh, and somewhere down the line, I'll share to everybody, and that's why I've kind of like been absent is this being tug of war emotionally, and then like then physically, I have just been barely a go lately. So right now, I'm feeling much better, kind of feeling back to myself and trying to get some a little bit more rest than what I normally do, and, then, and I'm finally letting this whole COVID thing just do what you got to do. The toys mode is going to kick back and chill out for the rest of the year, I think. I think the rest of the year, I'm just going to sit back. Do some videos, smile, laugh, go to a, I think a Martin Jalad's got the uh, toy swap down here towards Woodstock, August the 1st. Going to be hanging out with everybody doing that. It's going to actually be a lot of fun. Stuff like that. Alpha. Yeah, man. Just, just trying to keep it going, man. Talking Star Wars. And, and Chris, I'm glad you're here on this subject because, you know, hey, he makes awesome Star Wars figures. And I'm sure, and, and, and I tell you what, and that's the coolest thing. And Gosh, I'm so glad you hopped on here, Chris. Is the only people that's doing cool Star Wars stuff is the independent guys. I mean, here it is. The big company Disney is barely getting out a handful of figures. And I think, Chris, you've done beat that what four times over this year or five times over. And and, uh, and, I, and I wish I wish I would have pulled if I know he's hopping on there, I would have pulled your Star Wars. Man, you want to see some cool R2D2s and the three POs? Oh my gosh. I mean, this guy has just made some amazing stuff. That is the only thing that is keeping vintage Star Wars alive right now is guys like Chris just doing what the bigger guys aren't. I mean, sorry, on, on our end, as far as Disney and Hasbro, they're just, re on us vintage guys, the, the ball's getting dropped. It really is. And that's why I'm talking about all this, Chris, because as far as like going to Walmart, we ain't got, there's nothing there. There's, I mean, they're just putting the same figures back in the, back in a different packaging and, and giving a new title versus vintage or whatever and everything. And then, you know, there's just nothing to look forward to. And then when they do finally come out with something, hell, you can't find it. I mean, it just getting like right now at my Walmart, the, vent, the retro collection, there's like four sets there. And guess what? They're all there. Except for the Boba Fetts. Everybody's raiding the damn Boba Fetts because of, everybody knows why, this TV show. Anything Mandalorian. And honestly, I thought the Yodas would disappear a little bit more. But I guess old Yodas is not satisfying everybody versus baby Yoda. Whatever. So, independents are the few. And I agree with you. And I, and I would love, and really, the... The true hope for Star Wars, I would wish some uh, bigger independent company would see someone like Chris and see the value that he's doing and see that he's truly in touch with the vintage fans and go and just say, hey, how much money do you need to go big and then dump Chris the money and then step back and just let Chris do his thing. And honestly, I think if that was to happen – Boom, would we see, A, not only some amazing cool figures that we, we've never seen before,
but then we would get the quality and we would get the supply and stuff that we're just not getting at our local Walmart. Sorry, toys. If you go down the toy aisle at Walmart, if it wasn't for rehashed retro things from the 80s, the toy aisles would look pretty pathetic right now. And it, it just really would. You pre-ordered a Bantha. Awesome. Thank you very much. The Bantha needs some love, guys. And from I think from what I heard over the grapevine is uh, it's at 90%. So... Getting close, guys. I told you. Just bite your tongue. Hang on for the ride. This baby's going to go across the finish line sooner or later. I mean, he will. And when it does, he had, he will defeat all odds on everybody said it would never get made. And like I said, and, and I will trust me, there's not going to be anybody else on the planet going to be more elated, excited, and probably pass out once I hear the news. And I I just hope I'm one of the first guys that gets to actually uh, do a review on this thing because, man, it has been torture waiting for this beautiful piece of work. I, I'm going to compliment on myself here, but I want to compliment Chris Smith on giving me the opportunity because this right here, for, for the both of us in, in the company, a labor of love. It really was. It, guys, we did this. Not only for vintage Star Wars, but we did it for you guys, the vintage Star Wars fans. That's why we did it. I mean, trust me, I'm sure Chris and me, if we would have talked about it any longer, we could have come up with a hundred excuses on why not to do the Panther. Look how big this damn thing is, people. Come on. It's the biggest thing you've seen coming out of independence. It really is. So, I mean... It was amazing that we've come this far. And like I said, it's going to go across the finish line. See, they, see uh, very soon, some surprises later. Oh, I can't. Oh, I, love, I love Christmas surprises. <laughs> he, he will just, like I said, the, the one time when I got the black R2. And, oh, Chris. That, why didn't they do that back in the 80s? Oh, my gosh. I mean. And that's what I'm saying. They could have easily done that back in those days and just for whatever reason didn't. And it's just, it's sad. But like I said, but thank you for Chris and, and, and Stan Solo and, and guys like you is just in the whole team that's coming up with these cool ideas. And like I said, that's the, the only hope we have right now because you can't hope in Disney and, and Hasbro and Walmart, Target or anything like that. You're just not going to find anything out there. And if you do find it, it's probably something you already have, and it's just in a different package. And I, and I, I, I think the a luster of having all the variants is starting to wear off on people. I think people's like, damn, I have spent a fortune, and now since they tank Star Wars at the movies, now you can't even resell the crap and make any kind of profit. So... They screwed the collectors, too, at the end of the day. So, so I mean, that's where I'm at, guys. I, I don't know. I don't see me buying too much Star Wars stuff. I, I do see if they come out and return to the Jedi line, I will get that just so it matches up. I think that would be neat on my wall. But as far as new Star Wars coming out, I, I've not seen any kind of figure being talked about. And this whole, uh, what is it, the 10-inch hyper-realism why? <laughs> that is just a big honking waste of time coming out. It's almost like these anim these uh what is it five inch anime? A it's not black series. Uh, B it's anime, and it's like you just took your. When I was five years old, you didn't have to dumb down a toy for me to make it so I would like it. I wanted what what I saw in the movie. So why I don't understand why they're dumbing the toys down. For such a small bracket of kids who probably ain't loyal to the Star Wars product anyway, versus us guys who are loyal and you're not, and you're coming out with the cheap crap. So I don't know. It, it's just very confusing how they're spending their money. And, and it's not, and I said, I'm not bashing Hasbro as much as I am Disney because Disney pays the bills. Disney tells Hasbro what to do, not the other way around. I'm sure Hasbro might throw in their chops a few times, but at the end of the day, Hasbro's got the final say-so. Uh, 
Yeah, it's getting close. That's that's what I heard. I, I think I seen it on the the internet a few weeks ago when I was laid up, not feeling good. I was, had a chance just to browse around, and I think I seen something where somebody posted it ninety percent. So, so very cool. I'm I'm excited. Like I said, like I told you guys, I, what me and Chris was on uh, YouTube what four months ago, something like that. I think it was Chris, and you know, and we all said, you know, just give it some time it's it's going to it's going to be the closer it gets the more people's going to hop on at the last minute and i honestly i see now it would probably it it wouldn't shock me if it's by the end of august it had done be there especially with everybody getting all this money and they're sitting at home not doing anything i really see them popping in there and you know and buying things oh romeo awesome so glad you hopped on here bro that's thinking about you yeah look at him 3.5 6 5 inch 2 inch 10 inch yeah scales are all and and guys it was it was done made clear back in the late 70s early 80s star wars only truly worked one scale back in those days now today's terms i think us older guys those vintage guys do like the vintage six inch scale i have no problem with this scale because this in my hand is almost the same feeling Versus when I was a kid holding this in my hand, it's there. There's a good respective re reflection there. I, I see that. I feel that. But all these other scales, sorry, 12 inch scale, unless you're doing a hot toys. And uh, let's see here, who's doing that? Uh, oh yeah, hot toys. Uh, and so <laughs> they're already doing it. So you coming out with a, a scale two inch smaller. No one's going to care. I mean, if, if, if anybody wants something hyper-realism, some $250, $300 figure, they're going to go to Sideshow and Hot Toys. Hello? Hasbro, you don't need to be wasting your time. They, they done cornered that market, not you. So you need to stick what you're good at. And, I, and like I said before, guys, I honestly think what they need to do for your younger kids who wants to get down and get dirty and play with the toys, come with like, make like a 10 point articulation a figure this size but with bendable knees bendable elbows and maybe a couple other joints not many not the not like what you see here about half of what that is into this that way they can have really good play value and have fun with it and then for us collectors stick with what you're doing really good right here come on stand up uh and we like this and in and, and this is so some of you Star Wars fans are listening, and I'm not beating you up. It's not going to get much better than what they're doing right now. There's only so much that computer digital stuff. It, it's at its max, okay? It's it's. I mean, and the only few reasons we have a few little problems is you still got a human being operating the buttons. So far as detail, we are. We're at it. It's at its best, guys. You're not going to get much better facial recognition. I mean, I mean, God, I mean, it's just not going to happen. I mean, it's it's it, we're, we're done at the top. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah, they're just throwing stuff at the wall and see what stuff sticks. And the sad thing is. It's not like our community has not been vocal for the last seven, to eight years on what we want. We have been very clear. I mean, it, it's we've been very open and very. Eh. The only thing that I have to say that I, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm tired of hearing about is people wanting more and more articulation and more and more photo reel. Guys, if you do anything else to these, they're going to start looking wanky. I mean, it's for leave it alone. I mean, and <clears throat> sorry guys, and at the end of the day, it's just a damn toy, guys. Come on, how much? more can, do you need to do with it all we were doing is setting it on our shelves anyway so i mean come on so and the only other thing that i see that's kind of negative you know we got the new snow speeder coming out black series man does that look great it looks awesome probably never going to have the damn thing because i'm probably never going to find it at the store at the hundred dollar what hundred and twenty dollar price or a hundred dollar whatever it is it's still way too damn much the only way I'm probably going to find it is through Big Bad Toy Store or somebody like that, some secondary market. And we're looking at $150, $175.
you're not going to pay it. Just not. And so they're, they're not making enough to where they can sit at Walmart and we get it at normal price. So once again, all you're doing is teasing me with something that you actually did good. Thanks a lot. So, so I, guys, I mean, I don't know what, I mean, please, if you got any questions or something you want to chime in here, but I'm, I'm about at the end of my rope here. I don't know a whole lot else. What to say about the deal is that I'm just, I really see us being on the down slope. And the only thing that's going to keep us from hitting rock bottom is uh, companies like Chris Smith and the, the amazing things that they're doing and giving us, they're going to be giving us the things that we'll never get out of Disney or, or anybody else. So, and, and that, and, un, and that's unfortunate, but I'm, I'm glad for Chris because he's definitely is, is, is getting himself cornered in a really good market here because, because I, that, it's really the only hope for uh, us vintage guys. Now, for all, all the new stuff, I'm sure Disney and Hasbro is going to pump out the, some kind of crap all the time. And But I'm here to say I will I will be shocked if I buy, if I'm buying Star Wars at Walmart or Target or whatever in 2021. I, I From right now, from what I'm hearing that what's on the docket coming toward this year and next year, I see the toy smuggler getting out of the Star Wars buying business. And, and like I said, and I got almost all the vintage stuff that I could ever want. So I'm not, I mean, wh wh where do you, where do you go from here? And then that's why I titled that is what do, what do we do? I mean, the fans strike back too. And I, and like I said, uh, Hey Matthew, how you doing brother? Good to see you, man. Hey, I got to call you. Hey, we need to talk this weekend. So, but guys, like I said, it's just, it's just, it's unfortunate, but, but you know, this may be, I'm hoping this is may open up another crack or a new hole in the whole situation where a company like Chris Smith can come in and just really take it to a whole. I know I'm, I'm, I'm here just what over a year ago, I remember t talking to Chris and, you know, I was like, man, you know, if, if we can get with the right niche of people and get enough people buying on a regular basis, man, could you really just bust things wide open? And, and I still think that could probably happen down the line. But like I said, the only worries that I have out of guys like me, like I said, I'm, I'm getting ready to get ready to knock it on 50 as it is. I mean, how many, how many more Star Wars toys am I going to buy? I mean, how many more He-Man stuff? You know, sooner or later, you know, you know, thank God I make toys. I mean, if I didn't make toys, I'd, I'd probably done be pulling my hair out by now because at least – designing things and, and making prototypes and stuff kind of change up the, you know, you know, you know, at least I'm not just buying all the time. Cause I mean, after a while you're going, there's not going to be nothing to buy. And I'm, and I won't buy crap. I, I go to Walmart and I look on the toy shelf, like the new ghostbusters that were out, you know, yeah, they just cheap reproductions of those. And I got like two sets of the old. So why buy? <laughs> yeah. I just, I didn't have, I don't have the room to, to display it, so I didn't, I've had, twice now I've had it in my hands and just put it back on the shelf, so, I mean, if I had a, I'm glad I don't have a huge warehouse, I'd probably spend twice as much, <laughs> I've done been there, I didn't have a 10 square, 10,000 square foot warehouse before, and all you want to do is fill it up, so, hey, what's up, Mason, how you doing, man, so, but guys, that's where I'm at, and like I said, uh, just like I said, glad to be back. Glad to see a bunch of people. Pop. Action. Hey, hey, thank you very much, Action Jackson Man. Thank you very much. And never caught you live before. Thank you for joining us. I almost missed you there. I'm sitting there trying to read and run my big mouth at the same time. So thank you for joining us. Like I said, I'm going to be uh, kind of getting back in the swing here and, and doing more videos. Like I said, uh, life gave me a, a few hard punches and uh, Kind of knocked me down and kind of slowed me down a little bit. But you guys know, you know me, the toy smuggler. I'm, I'm, I'm a fighter. I'm going to get right back in here. And this is, like I said, the only reason I've not been on lately is, is I've been in so much pain. Uh, I probably wouldn't have been a nice guy if I got on here. So uh, it's just best to keep my mouth shut. So that's what I've been doing. And and being a bunch of pain medication, that probably wouldn't have been too good. Here. So, so I decided to just chill out for a while. But like I said, I'm getting back in the swing here. And I hope you guys watch some older videos. And then, guys, do me a favor. One thing that I want to thank all you uh, guys, obviously you guys, even though I've not done much this month, have really been keeping the toy smuggler word alive. And I want to thank you because I'm still getting 
a decent amount of subscribers almost every day. And it's but definitely every week. So and that definitely that means you guys are definitely keeping the, the word going about me and stuff. And I just want to say I'm definitely grateful for that. And we're really knocking on that 1,000 subscribers. So if you've not subscribed or if you know a good friend who might like my show, please let them know. Please tell them to come subscribe because once I hit the 1,000 subscriber, guys, it's going to open up a, a lot more doors where the toy smuggler can do a little bit more cool and elaborate things. And it's going to help me get more views because right now the views suck. I, I'm, I'm here to tell you it's my channel and the views suck. And I'm really trying to do good quality content. I got a great, I got the best fan base a guy can ask for. But our views are horrible. And it's just because where I'm underneath the 1,000 subscribership, YouTube don't push my videos. So once we get to the 1,000 subscribers, then they start pushing it more. Then I can monetize all that other beautiful, crazy stuff. So YouTube's not going to be helping us until we hit that mark until then it's just if it's if it's not me advertising and you guys advertising on facebook very few people are going to know so if you're advertising me thank you very much appreciate it and if you hadn't please throw me a bone out there tell somebody about me tell them i'm pretty good pretty good old guy tell them i'm definitely entertaining crazy definitely crazy and like i said i'm but i'm here to deliver anything you guys want me to cover i'm here to do it Love you guys. You guys have a great, safe weekend. Toy Smuggler's back. Love you guys. Y'all take it easy.